The sentences lack plurals, articles, and tenses, but they do maintain the typical word order of actor first, action second, and object last. Making a fat, making a fat. I do want to. After the age of two, as a child's mental abilities develop, early restriction on how much information he or she can get into one coherent statement are lifted. By the age of four or five, the child is using language in much the same way as an adult does. Its biggest task during these early years has been to discover the underlying regularities in the way adults use language, the rules of grammar and syntax. Dan Slobin is a psycholinguist at the University of California at Berkeley. Slobin has studied how all children acquire a system of grammatical rules on their own, without imitating the people around them. For the past 20 years or so, we've been sending teams of researchers out all over the world to jungles, cities, villages, recording speech of little children to see how it is that children begin to acquire their native languages. And we found by now that uh, regardless of what kind of language it is, what kind of social setting the child is learning under, uh, two-year-olds are beginning to apply the grammatical structures of the languages that they hear. And where do you go to school? I like art school and art school. And what do you do at art school? I paint. For example, in English, we follow very strict word order. We always first talk about what we're going to do and then what we're going to do it to. So we say, give me a cookie, drink the milk, show me your hand. First word is always the word about the action. The second word is the word about the object. Now that division between action and object word seems to be quite universal in languages and children pick that up quite early. In English, they also quite early in their own two word speech pick up that word order pattern. So even if they're saying things that are quite short and simple, English children will say things like, I want cookie. They won't say cookie, I want. They'll say more milk, not milk more. They'll first talk about the action and then they'll talk about the object. So they're already speaking grammatically. Now if you were to ask your ordinary parent in the street how their child learned to talk, they would probably say, he just imitated, what's the problem? Well, one problem is if you listen to what children say, they often say things that they couldn't have imitated. So the children might say, a child may, might say something like, uh, I break the glass, or uh, I fall down. Now, the adults don't say things like break and fall, but the child does. And if you hear a child saying things like, braked and falled. This means that the child has worked out the pattern for forming the past tense in English. English doesn't always follow that pattern, but the child has decided that once you find a pattern, it's neat to stick with it. So that even if one doesn't say braked or falled, uh, and the child doesn't hear it, for a long time the child will use this pattern. So for a long period, for uh, about the ages of three to five, Children are very persistent in trying to build a regular kind of grammar. We see this across all languages. Wherever languages show bits that are irregular, children try to make them fit their own regular pattern. They have an uncanny sense of how a grammar should be structured. Mm. Goalie, forward and half back. What? What's the name of your team? So now we're six years old, and we've acquired a highly sophisticated language to help us navigate through all the complex environments in which we have to function. But what happens when we bump into other people who are also navigating their way through social situations? How do we coordinate our intentions with theirs to avoid conflicts and to gain the ends we both want? How do we learn the rules of conversation? My, I have a Judy sister. No, you don't. I have my my cousin, my cousin Joel, and my cousin Mango. Mango. <laughs> According to psycholinguists, most dialogues are highly structured forms of social communication. And they include three essential features that must be understood and shared by both parties. 
The first is opening conversations in ways that signal the willingness to converse. Hi. Hi. The second is understanding the unwritten rules for taking turns. And the third is closing conversations by mutual agreement. When these seemingly simple acts are not carried out properly, the result is confusion and even distress. The duck going to a city? Parents teach their children the rules of dialogue in a number of ways. They engage them in conversations. They ask questions and seek replies. They teach them what to say after someone has said or done something. Please. Such as thank you please. or yes, please. Thank you. Thank you. Please, please, please. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Henry was too hungry to resist. No, Henry. These no, early no. social activities not only help children to use language to gain their own ends, but also enable them to assist others in achieving their goals. What is it? What is what? That. That's Henry talking to the banana lady. Hannah, your food ready. Without a stable structure of social verbal interaction, they wouldn't be able to use language in ways that are conversationally correct. Children have to be taught how to collaborate with other conversationalists. Hi, Yon. Want some pancakes? Sure. What would life be like without language? It would be life without access to the world of ideas, 